ready for true happiness, for deep fulfillment, for feeling alive, on purpose, and in control of your life again, it's time to be the bold, brilliant, beautiful woman you were born to be. Welcome to the Purpose Girl Podcast. I'm women's happiness and life purpose expert, Karen Rockhunt, and I'm going to teach you how to live on purpose, feel alive, and be happy in every aspect of life. I'm going to get real about my life and interview women who are living on purpose so that you can finally live yours. Welcome to the show. Hello, 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 Purpose Girls. So for the last couple of years, I have been on a journey. And it's a little scary to talk about it, even though I have talked about it on previous episodes. But it's scary, and I'm going to do it anyway. I've been on a sensual and a sexual exploration journey a journey of understanding who am I and how do I embody that part of my womanhood. And it's scary to share because you all might reject me. I already and very recently was rejected for talking about this publicly. But I talk about it because what I've been discovering is that in my own life for years, I wasn't feeling fully in my body. I honestly wasn't orgasming all that often and sometimes not at all. And rather than talk about it because it was taboo and I wasn't supposed to talk about it, I just felt ashamed, like there's something wrong with me. And then clients would start talking to me about their own personal life, about what was going on in their bodies or feeling cut off from this part of them. And I realized this is so important for each one of us. And the more I've been exploring this for myself, the more I realize so much can be healed in our lives. If we heal the trauma, we heal the stigma, we heal what has been placed upon us about our very own bodies. And what actually happens is becoming more empowered in every single area of our lives. And so what I want to do today on the episode of the Purpose Girl podcast is to give you the opportunity to begin or continue your own exploration from a place of total and complete self-compassion, from a place of total and complete empowerment, because the more empowered we are in our own bodies, the more we can go after our purpose, the more we can go after any dream, the more we can feel healed and we can love and we can connect, and frankly, the happier we will be. And so I invite you to go on this journey with me today. I have the best expert on earth to take us through this. She is one of my sisters, my soul sisters. She is one of my teachers and she is a goddess, dear friend walking this earth. Let me introduce you to Lauren Harkness. Lauren is co-founder of the Tantra Institute, which teaches in 25 cities internationally and growing every single day. She teaches many classes individually and with her partner. She is a trained tantrika and an advanced certified Tantra educator with Charles Muir Source School of Tantra, an orgasmic meditation instructor. She's trained in the DS arts and shamanism with Om Rapani. She's a graduate of Mama Gina School of Womanly Arts, a mastery graduate. She is an incredible jewelry designer, a seductress, and she takes a stand for everyone who is ready to heal and further ignite their sexual self, their sovereign self, and be free. She teaches Tantra and other modalities of healing and personal growth. She offers private Tantra sessions, orgasmic meditation training, coaching sessions, and Reiki healing. She teaches larger classes internationally. She's taught at Burning Man, FYN, Dark Odyssey. She's recently been featured on television. You are going to see a lot more of my dear soul sister, Lauren. Lauren, welcome to the Purpose Girl Podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be here. Yay. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) So we know that this can be like a little bit of a taboo topic, right? Yes. And I have not shared with my listeners that I recently had an experience where I was actually fired from um, a speaking gig where I was not going to talk about sexuality. I was going to talk about purpose and self-love actually for high school girls who I think really need it. And I was going to talk about how to, you know, use different tools to overcome stress and pressure. And I was fired because I I've been talking about my own journey online. And so it's scary. And so I just want to open up with 
for anyone listening, if this is totally new and they're feeling uncomfortable, how do, how do we even begin to have this conversation? It's such an important topic. And I'm so glad you brought this up because it is so taboo and it's so underground. But human sexuality is one of the biggest opportunities that we have for empowerment, for embodiment, for um, utilizing this great life force energy. It's not Mm. just sexuality, it's our life force. And Mm. the more we are friends with it, the more it becomes an ally in our life and the more it becomes a benefit to us and everyone around us. And Mm. I really truly believe that central empowerment for teenagers is, is a very important topic because when a woman is centrally embodied, and this goes for, for boys and girls, they are in touch with their animal instincts. They know how to say yes and no because they can feel themselves and they can feel others. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you know, children are watching porn to get their education, which right. is <laughs> the <laughs> worst education. And so I, I'm very passionate that, that we start bringing this into the topic of conversation, conscious sexuality for everyone, because it's, it's a life-giving, hugely important topic. Mm. Is it ever? Is it ever? And I think when we ignore it or we pretend it's not there, then like you're saying, what happens with kids is they're, they're looking at porn because they have to get it. They have to look somewhere. They've got to learn somewhere. And then when we ignore it as women, what I have found is then we bury ourselves in other places, right? We numb out maybe on food or we numb out in shopping. We, you know, we start getting really angry, right? Like our emotions have to, all that has to go somewhere. And so we're so much more temperamental. We're so much more, right? Because we aren't just fully in the bodies that we were given. Completely, completely. And if, if we talk about the body, like the, the clitoris is the only human organ that sole function is pleasure. Mm. Like, I don't think God would have created to bring God into the topic of sacred sexuality. <laughs> yes, God, yes, would thank n- you. God would not have created our bodies with this grand button of pleasure if we weren't meant to fully experience it. Mm. And it's, it is so good for our health. You know, orgasms bring GABA, oxytocin, all of these really empathic, beautiful hormones flooding your system. Mm. It's anti-cortisol. I mean, it's, it's a really important part. And, and you mentioned when we are not sexually expressed, we get cranky. We feel, um, you know, we have stress hormones that are running rampant in our body. And, and all sorts of negative things can occur in our lives. And when we're sexually free, we feel relaxed, open, easy, empathetic, community-driven. It's, mm. it's just, it's so important. And I have been recognizing that in my own life and then mm-hmm. in, in clients, just as I've been sharing what I've mm-hmm. been learning, it's been amazing to see this power. So I know you had a journey and you know, yes. anyone who looks at you, like, when y'all see Lauren's picture right next to this podcast episode, you're like, oh, that woman has been, you know, turned on and she has like been essentially, you know, in her body her whole life. Um, but I know you've had your own journey. And so Absolutely. I think it would be helpful to take people through that. Absolutely. I'd be happy to share. You know, my sexuality used to be um, a detriment in my life. Um, I grew up in a family where both of my parents had been abused as children. And so the topic of sexuality was very hush. It was hidden. It was, there was a lot of shame around it. And not only about sexuality, but about feelings in general. And I kind of always felt wrong for who I am because I'm this wild little creature. And I had a lot of emotions all the time and yes. a lot of passion. And, um, and it was kind of like living in a pressure cooker. Mm. And so I became promiscuous as a teenager. I was rebellious and I became promiscuous. Um, and I started having a lot of sex, but it was not a lot of sex I could feel. I, mm. I never orgasmed. Um, I felt broken around mm. the whole topic of sexuality. I went out with the wrong kind of boys. Mm. Um, and it, it definitely was um, something I was doing to myself because I couldn't feel anything. I, I didn't know how to communicate. And I was, I was shut down, really. I was shut down, but having a lot of sex. And I know that I'm not alone in that. A lot of Mm-mm. girls have that experience as teenagers. Yeah. Um, and I always have, I have this picture of like, there's like a seeking. There's a, yes. you, you were like seeking something. You were yes. craving seeking something. Seeking approval, approval, approval outside of myself. love. Yeah. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Right. I think it's so common. It's so common. And, you know, we're taught, and my, myself included, that, um, 
you know, sex is an external experience. You know, it's our mm. partner's job to give us what we, what we want or need. They should know what we want or need. Um, it was definitely cut off from my communication. And so I went through my 20s, you know, kind of having the same experience, a lot of drunken sex in, in college. And mm -hmm. yeah. um, it, it, was, it was a detriment in my life. And then I found Mama Gina's when I was 27. And I thought, you know what? I need to do something about this because mm. I have a lot of passion. I'm very creative. I was an artist. And I knew that I needed to do something to help myself change. Little did I know that this quest would turn into my life's mission. <laughs> <laughs> your life's mission, your life's work. I mean, you now have yeah. impacted, influenced tens of thousands of people. So thank goodness I'm so that you started. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so I found, um, you know, extended massive orgasm, and I, I like the good librarian daughter that I am. I ended up reading <laughs> all of the exercises in the book, and I gave myself a four-minute orgasm. Um, and this was a hugely awakening experience. It wasn't a big giant climax like you might expect, but it was more like these rolling waves that you can do for hours and hours and hours. Mm. Um, I teach it in my sensual alchemy class, and then Guy and I teach it in our weekend workshop as well. And um, I didn't know what was going to come from this, but what happened was it sensitized my whole vulva. And all of a sudden, I began to be able to drop into orgasmic states with whomever I chose to have sexual experiences with. Mm. Now I was excited about this. Um, <laughs> You're like, I wait, I went from I never orgasm exactly. to... Exactly. And what's beautiful, and I want to I put like a, a, a picture frame yeah. around it so that we all remember this. It's not that you got into your body by letting someone else do something nope. to you. No. Nope. You this was from you really saying I'm let me discover my own body. Let me yeah. come to love myself and let me learn how I like what feels good for me and how I can give myself pleasure. Right? And I know that a lot of people have been taught that self-pleasure is wrong, that masturbating was and and I have talked about it here on the Purpose Girl podcast. There is no other way, right? It's so how can true. we ask anyone else to bring us pleasure if we don't start to really understand it for ourselves. So it's so yeah. important that you did this for yourself. It's so true. And thank you for pointing that out. And this is something that I teach, that we teach. We teach self-practice and partner practice mm. because you're right. This idea of sexual sovereignty, I think, is, has been bouncing around in many circles. And it's, it's one of the core foundations that I teach because you're right. If my body is an instrument and I want to be a master musician, I need to practice my scales. I need to learn what kind of pressure I like, what kind of speed, the variety that, that intrigues me. Um, and, and I teach self-practice in a goalless way. It's not like we're chasing an orgasm. It's actually, how can I get into my body and explore my sensations, all my sensations, mm. sight, sound, smell, taste, yes. feel, perception. It's a spiritual act. Oh. And the more you practice with yourself every day, 10 minutes even, you know, yes. loving yourself. It's a self-loving act. And then when you get into a sexual experience with anyone else, you're sharing that self-love with them. And mm. it's a gift. Yes. There's so much here. One of the things I think is so important, you're, when we talk about sensuality, so many people immediately jump to sex. Yeah. And sensuality is through all five senses. Completely. Right. And so one of the things I can always see my guests, even though you can't like while we tape and I was watching and Lauren was just like beautifully, even just touching her own arm and her own shoulder. And how often as women do we look at our arm? We go, oh, that's flabby, you know, as opposed to really loving her and what a difference it's going to make in our entire, our day, our mood, our attitude, our interactions, our everything, our work. Completely. If we, if we take in all the senses, the feel, the smell, the taste, the, the sight, it makes such a difference. So this is, it's so important that I think we really understand what that word is. I love that you said that too. I, I recently had a, an epiphany around my, my own sovereignty around exercise in this way, because mm. like I was, oh, I should go to yoga so I can lose weight, you know, or all mm. these things. And you know what I found? I was resisting it and I wouldn't go. And then I would feel bad about myself. But when I changed my lens and I was like, how can I enjoy exercise? Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> all of a sudden I was like, 
I'm going to S Factor. I'm dancing all the time. I'm like <laughs> yes. taking walks in the sunshine because it feels good. And it's all those feel good hormones that are enlivening. And you're right. It does. It affects our work. Like uh, if you have an orgasm in the morning, I guarantee you're going to enjoy your day much more <laughs> than if, if you're like percent. forcing yourself to eat breakfast and then get to work, you know? Right. Right. And you're like, Oh, this is so frustrating. You know, it's like, in, yeah. how do we enjoy? Yeah. And so you've used the words sacred sensuality, sacred sexuality. What does that mean? What a beautiful question. Mm -hmm. To me, my sexuality and my sensual expression is how I access my God source within Mm. my body. Mm. If we talk about Kundalini theory, we have our sexual energy. It lives at the base of our spine and it weaves its way through our chakras up to our crown, the top of our head. And for us, Tantra is about embodiment with our animal instincts, which are our lower centers, and our spiritual centers, which are our higher centers. And so when you have an integrated sacred sexuality practice, you're both lusty and spiritually alive. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, it's a really empowering place to be. So when I'm experiencing my own sensual energy, and like I said, it's life force energy. You could be touching your genitals, but you could also be breathing and squeezing your pelvic floor muscles and using the vagus nerve to channel Mm. this energy all over your body. So every single cell is sparkling. Mm. And when I'm doing that, my upper centers are awake and alive. And sometimes I'm like having all of these downloads from my higher self about things I could do in the world or, you know, ideas that I have that I want to share or inspiration Mm. or visions of, you know, how humanity can benefit. Mm. And this is all while my sensual energy is running. And Mm. so for me, sacred sexuality is really about that embodiment of both our spirit and our animal. And to me, that's what my life is about really. Mm. Mm. That is so beautiful. And how often do we, in the name of spirituality, cut off the animal? Completely. I was just speaking with a friend of mine who is a high school teacher today, because I was sharing Mm -hmm. with her what happened. Oh yeah. You know, and we were talking about how, how as women and as girls, we were, we've been taught to doubt ourselves and we've been taught to doubt our bodies because I love that you're using the word life force. This is your life force energy. And just the way I hear that and my interpretation of that, and then I'd love to hear if I'm, you know, spot on or there's something else with it, is that we think about our sensuality, our sexuality is actually what creates human life. Completely. And so that power, it's not just, oh, you know, penis meets (laughs) vulva and (laughs) vagina. It is literally that there's an energy there and that that life force energy that creates life, human life we can use then and we can access when we're in it in, in order, it, it takes us higher. It takes us into thinking about higher community. It takes us into thinking about how to make the world a better place. It takes us into being kinder to other people because it, it creates life. And so it, it's so beautiful. And she and I were talking about how really sex is a part of, of being human. It is a yes. part of being any animal. It's a part of being human. But when a girl, when we're girls and we are interested sexually, we're called a slut. Mm -hmm. But when a boy is interested sexually, sexually, well, boys will be boys. That's just being a boy. He's a stud. He's a stud, right? I mean, it's the opposite. Yes. Completely. Of course, we have this self-doubt around it. But what I love is you're saying, let's access it as life energy. Completely. Wow. Wow. This is like so, so cool. So if there's a woman listening to this and she's like, okay, this sounds amazing, but I've had so many blocks. <laughs> like, I don't even know where to begin because she's felt turned off. Maybe vaginally she's dry. Maybe she's already going through menopause. You know, there's a million reasons. She hasn't felt attracted to anybody, even her partner in a really long time. Where do we even begin? Oh, wow. That, what a great question. Thank you for asking that because I think a lot of women – have that like, oh, it's too late for me or other people can have that, but not me. And I want to say to everyone that is not true. And that is a false belief. Just like 
we get taught that when we age, you know, everything dries up. Not true. Not true at all. Hmm. Um, and so what I want to say is where to start is simply in your own embodiment. And that could be anywhere from taking a dance class or, you know, coming to one of my classes. I teach yes. a yoni, yoni egg class, which is all about self-practice with your own life force energy. And it will lubricate your whole life, to be mm. metaphorically, <laughs> to metaphorically speak. Basically um, and figuratively. and ex- Exactly. And breath practice. Honestly, mm. tantric breathing is so powerful. You could sit and meditate for five minutes in the morning doing breathing exercises and that will start to circulate your life force energy. Mm. You Would know, you, you take us through one? What does that look? What does sure. That mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I love when I get to have my guests on and it just means I get more teaching. <laughs> 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 so what do we do, Lauren? Okay. Okay. There are four nerve pathways where sexual energy runs up your spine into your brain. Um, The pedendal nerve is your clitoris. The pelvic nerve is your G-spot. The hypogastric nerve is through your anus. And then the vagus nerve is a very important nerve pathway. It runs up the front side of the body, actually. um, And it touches on all the organs and nerve plexuses. It goes up through the nipples into the throat and then into the brain behind the ears. Mm. Vagus nerve, it produces a parasympathetic response, which resets your nervous system, brings you back from fight or flight brings you into a state of calm. Breathing exercises are one of the ways that you can stimulate your vagus nerve. Um, Sexual activity also runs on the vagus nerve. You could do cold plunges. If you want to Google vagus nerve, kundalini energy, you'll hit a bunch of articles that will take you down a rabbit hole. But we're about to do a little breathing practice to awaken those sexual nerve pathways. The pelvic floor muscle runs around the clitoris, through the perineum, around the anus, through the perineum, and back up again in a figure eight. Hmm. If you squeeze and release your pelvic floor muscle as you breathe, and I will guide you through this, you're going to be cultivating, kind of like bellows, cultivating the sexual energy and sending it up your spine into the brain. Hmm. So we're going to do that now. When you squeeze your pelvic floor muscle, it's the same muscle that you use if you have to pee and hold it. So you Mm. can isolate that now while you're listening, just feeling that muscle. And then we're going to start start the breathing practice. So you can close your eyes and begin taking long, deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth, making an audible sigh as you exhale. Feel your spine long and tall. Feel your hips get heavy. And so it's almost like you have the weight of gravity pulling your hips downward. And then as if you had a string pulling your head up towards the heavens. And in between is your beautiful body, your straight spine, your glowing heart and your sexual organs rooted in the ground. (sighs) As you inhale, see if you can feel energy coming from the base of your spine to the top of your head. And as you exhale like a waterfall or electric waves from the top of your head to the base of your spine. So you have a super highway of energy going up and down your spine as you breathe. The next time you inhale, hold your breath at the top and squeeze your pelvic floor muscle up towards the top of your head. Tight, tight, tighter. Like a balloon, you're pulling it up towards the top of your head. When you can't hold your breath in anymore, hyper-relax that muscle and then exhale with sound. Take a normal breath in between, in and out. And again, inhaling, holding your breath at the top of your inhale, squeezing your pelvic floor muscle, 
tight, tight, tighter towards the top of your head, like you're pulling a balloon up. When you can't hold your breath in anymore, hyper relax your muscle and exhale the sound. Normal breath in between. <sighs> Again, breathing in, holding your breath. This time we're gonna pulse the muscle. So holding your breath and now squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax. When you can't hold your breath in anymore, hyper relax your muscle and exhale the sound. <sighs> Breathing normally in between, in and out. <sighs> One more time, inhaling, holding your breath. Squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax. Let it feel good. Building that beautiful life force energy within your body. When you can't hold your breath in anymore, hyper relax your muscles and exhale with sound. <sighs> Take three normal breaths and then you can open your eyes. And that for five minutes every day is really all you need. <laughs> yeah, I can feel that. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. First of all, yeah. I feel so much more relaxed. Right. And present, right? And present. And then I'm I'm just I'm noticing a lightness in my body. Uh-huh. Right. And I'm noticing my mind not chitter chatter. Yeah. Right? Just like emptiness. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Thank you. Like an ele pleasure. elevation. So when we do this practice, mm -hmm. that's what's flooding our body with all the good hormones that you mentioned, the Completely. oxytocin, which is the love hormone. and the, yeah. yeah. GABA, which is anti-stress. Okay. Got it. Yep. And what about if there's a woman out there and she was doing this and she's like, I can't get my mind to shut up. That's a good question. And um, our hands are connected to our heart chakra. Mm. And so you can bring your own hands to your body. And that will naturally start to transmit your own self-loving energy. So if, you're, if your mind is spinning, you can put your hands on your head. You know, if you feel stuckness in your belly. So sometimes people get frustrated because before the pathway is clear, a lot of times there's blocks, you know, shame around sexuality, any sexual trauma that may be living in your body. You can put your own hands on your body where you may feel numbness, mm. um, shards of glass, tightness. Those are all signifiers of stuck energy that hasn't opened up yet. The yeah. other thing I want to mention is sometimes when you're starting this practice, you may have a lot of emotions living in your body around your sexuality and you are not alone. And the best thing to do is to bring your pleasure to the pain. Hmm. When you do this, it starts to alchemize those places. A lot of, and myself included, I used to shut down around my sex and I would numb out or disconnect. And so it's really easy to feel like, oh, well, that's okay for them, but I have trauma in my, my body. Yeah. So therefore I'm broken and I can't have this pleasure. Right. But the truth is, if you allow yourself to cry, when you start to feel the feelings bubble up, it's like wringing out a sponge. And on mm. the other side of that emotional release is more space for pleasure to flood in. Mm. So I would say if you're breathing and you start to feel tears, welcome them, open to them. You can use movement to start to shake. Um, you can circle your hips. You can put your hands on your body in the places where you feel stuck and continue to breathe and feel. Mm. If you feel anger, let the anger come to the surface and continue to breathe and feel. I promise you, if you let yourself have those emotional waves, they will clear. Emotions are like waves. They rise, they crest, they peak, and they recede on their own. And oftentimes we'll pull away from the sensation at the highest point of the peak, which means that gets locked in your body. And so those things get re-triggered all oh. the time. 
if instead you relax and you're like, okay, this feels really terrible, but I'm going to breathe and feel it, it will tip over and it will start to recede on its own and there will be a calmness afterwards. Mm. It's like a, t- a child having a temper tantrum when they just cry all the cries you know, or scream all the screams, then there's space for pleasure on the other side. They can yes. get up and play again. And right. the same is true for us as adults. Right. And we just have not allowed ourselves the fullness of our emotion, you know? And so I'm loving what you're saying about letting any emotion, if shame is coming up for you, yep. crying, let it out, or shame is coming up for you and you're screaming. Yeah. You know, I took a Tantra class where you were co-teaching and yeah. and the homework practice that I did at night, you know, it sounded like it was going to be all pleasure. <laughs> what ended up happening was in that so many emotions. I screamed, I cried, I laughed, you know, and yeah. And sometimes you can feel uncomfortable. I know in the past I've cried during sex and thought, well, what's wrong with me? Like, but this is so normal. And I think that it there's is. so, because there's so much in our bodies, in our own lives. And I think we carry our mothers, our grandmothers, you know, Completely. all of the pain past of all, lives. past Absolutely. lives, all the pain of all women in yep. our bodies. And so we can work through it. Absolutely. What if someone's listening to this and they think, well, I want to be on this exploration or I feel sexually empowered, but how do I relate to my partner about this? How do I start talking to them? Oh, that is a can of worms, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right? like, um, I heard this podcast and, yeah. you know, yeah. What, what do we do? How do we open up about this? That's a really good question. You know, I would say you could come take a class because a lot of our intro classes are really based in in basic human connection exercises. Mm. They're not necessarily sexually focused. Mm. Um, or oh, I love that. Wait, let's pause there for a minute. Yeah. Because, so I, I have, in full disclosure, I mean, I'm telling you, I've taken Lauren's classes yeah. and was like, I mean, it really is. It's life changing to be in touch with your body in this way. And I haven't taken a partner yeah. class with you yet. Um, so, so share, so that you do some classes that are more about relating. What does that look like? Yeah. Um, our intro to sexual ecstasy class is really based in pure human connection. So it mm. is, it's about getting in touch with what does my body feel? What are my desires? And often in, in relationships, we get habituated because we think we know what our partner wants when, when really human desire is fluid, it could change at any moment and there's gradients of it. And mm. so um, a lot of our classes are, we have a desire exercise where we, we ask questions of each other and start to get to know each other and get to know the changing nature of desire. And wow. when you're in a long-term relationship, when you do this, when you practice desire in real time, all of a sudden your relationship becomes like a choose your own adventure novel rather than mm. reading the same chapter every day. So <laughs> I love that be, analogy, right? It's really good. So it can be really fun and also simple. You know, mm. we don't take people into really sexually based practices first because human connection is, is a life force energy and is vulnerable and intimacy mm. is vulnerable. Mm. And so when we start off slowly, you know, you can bring your partner to a class without thinking, oh, it's going to be too much or it's going to trigger them because, you know, human connection is the gateway. It's like the gateway drug to right all the other things. Right. And it's so interesting because, you know, my question was, how do we talk to our partners about this? Yeah. And we don't know how to have those conversations. We've, we've really never been taught really yeah. how to have an intimate conversation around sexuality, around sexuality, and even about other things. Right. Completely. I mean, even about what, what we're feeling, what we need. And I think that's so often, and I know that this is like a behavior and a pattern of mine that I've worked on so much. So I can go into being like, super needy or super aggressive. You didn't do this. Yeah. And he's like, I didn't even know you wanted that, you know, totally so, right. Or like, you didn't listen to me around the restaurant. He's like, you said you didn't care, you know? And so yeah. however we can have those communication yeah. challenges because we're not taught. And so there's, there's ways of opening and relating. And one is, Hey, let's just, let's take a relationship course or let's learn how to communicate a communication. Course. Absolutely. And what I would say is the best thing is to ask curious questions of your partner is to put your attention on them and ask curious questions and then ask yourself those same questions. Like, hey, what does your sexuality mean to you? Because we can be in relationship for years and not know the answer to that. You know, what, what, do you, what are your dreams and what are your hopes in your sexuality? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. I think asking curious questions is the most fun thing to do in relationship yes. because then you get to know each other over time and, you, and there's always deeper layers, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and the two things I'm hearing here, one is shifting it from being a stressful conversation totally to being curious yeah. and having fun with it and open and Hey, let's, you know, so I think when we approach anything with that joyful, like you were saying, yeah. you approach exercise, if you approach it from joy, it's different than if you approach it from frustration. And so Completely. if you approach this as, Hey, I'm curious or, you know, from a, I want to know about this about you, or you have fun with it. It's a totally different conversation because you're in a different place when you're doing it. Yes. Which is absolutely incredible. It is. Now, some of what you talk about, Lauren, is like when I was reading your bio, Mm -hmm. you know, you've mentioned Jade Egg, you've mentioned, you know, orgasmic meditation. These are topics that are probably new for a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like when you talk about Jade Egg, what is it? Just so we're all, we all know what we're thinking. Okay. So, um, Jade Egg practice, um, is a Taoist practice and it comes from China 5,000 years ago. And it was traditionally used by concubines and Queens. Um, and it's a small egg, a gemstone egg. You do Kegel exercises around it. Basically, um, you insert it into your vaginal canal and we have three bands of muscles and you can learn how to isolate each band, pulling the egg up and down. It has many health benefits. It pulls up your entire pelvic floor, which holds up all of your muscles. So if you have mm-hmm. ever had uterine or a bladder prolapse, it can be um, a big, big key in helping you heal those things. Mm-hmm. Um, it stimulates your hormones. It brings blood flow and consciousness. Um, it makes you tighter, which is better, makes for better orgasms. Mm-hmm. And it can bring more lubrication. So Hmm. especially for women who've gone through menopause and their bodies are changing, the jade egg practice can help you awaken those sexual feelings again and awaken your desire and heal the the pain you may be having in your yoni. Wow. I have to tell you, you don't know this, but um, a friend of mine took your jade egg class. Oh, cool. And she's so passionate about it now that I, she got me to buy one and I own one, but I haven't really known what to do with it. So, <laughs> the, so I have to take <laughs> your class too, right? I, I will. have one this week. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like really incredible that, so she's really, you know, and she's, I think in her late forties, maybe early yeah. 50 and was saying how much this has helped her. So there are tools, right? Anyone who's, Completely. I had a recent episode that was all about you know, instead of a midlife crisis, a midlife catalyst. And we're talking about how our bodies change in menopause. So this is a way of really keeping, keeping yourself, you said lubricated and keeping yourself really healthy in, as your body is changing. Absolutely. Yeah. And orgasmic meditation is, it's from the lineage of Morehouse, which is um, extended massive orgasm is one of the practices, deliberate orgasm. It's a clitoris stroking practice. Um, but it's goalless. So it's more like riding those waves I was telling you about, right. which is what I teach in sensual alchemy. And this can be a very important sexual practice. It awakened the pedendal nerve in me. And then all of a sudden I started having so much more sensation in my entire vulva. Mm-hmm. Um, and so orgasmic meditation, deliberate orgasm, extended massive orgasm, you know, you can come study with me too, but it's a very soft light touch. And therefore, your nerve endings have to grow out to meet the sensation. And that's how it extends your orgasm. It makes it longer, more powerful, more sensational. Um, And it can be um, very powerful if you've gone through menopause as well to keep your sexual energy active. Mm. And that then has such reverberations. What have you noticed in some of the women that you've worked with who have started opening up in this way? Oh my gosh. I mean, it's life-changing really, to be honest. For me personally, I've started to learn how to access my emotions in a deeper way, how to move old anger that probably comes through my family line around the masculine and it has opened the space for love in my life. For some of my clients that I've worked with, they have learned how to clear their sexual trauma either through doing tantra healing sessions with me or um, working with their own, their own sexual energy through the Onian practice and mm-hmm. other practices. And um, what happens is when you clear trauma, all of a sudden your whole life opens up. Mm-hmm. Um, people have gotten jobs that they they wanted or you know moved across the country or met the partner that they wanted to be with and fell in love with all from being embodied in this really sensual way. Mm, it's so beautiful. 
Mm-hmm. And then I have one last question before we get into the purpose power play round. Yes. We were mentioning youth early on. Yes. If someone is listening to this and they think, how do I talk to my teenager? Yeah. About this. What's just one piece of advice you would give? Oh. <sighs> So if I were to give one piece of advice around talking to teenagers, especially teenage girls, I would say, because there's so much misinformation out there, that your own sensual relationship with yourself is going to be a foundational block for your whole life. Mm. And so it's good to masturbate. It's good to learn your body. Mm. And this goes for boys too. Mm -hmm. It's good to experience that flood of hormones that makes you feel good about yourself and makes you feel more Mm self-loving. So I would say, you know, talking to your teenager in a way that is about the benefits that that will follow in their whole life from their sexual expression might be one way to open up the conversation. I know teenagers are like, oh, mom, uh," you know, (laughs) I don't want to hear this. Yeah. Don't talk to me about this. Um, What my mom did was, was she gave me our bodies ourselves. Mm. There's a whole chapter of masturbation in it. Um, So there are a lot of resources out there around um, sexuality that that maybe a teenager could look at on their own (laughs) so they wouldn't feel so like embarrassed that their parent is talking to them about it. Right. But um, I Well, it's a question. Do we start as teens? Do we start early? I think we start earlier. Yeah. Oh, totally. 12, 13. And I love this because what you've said is that it will, if we are embodied and we're yeah. comfortable. Like I started masturbating when I was five and I was, I just thought it was a private thing. I knew, I knew it yeah. was something I should be ashamed of. Right. Even uh-huh. though I really, I kind of wasn't, I just did it on my own in my bedroom, but I knew it was something not to talk about. But if we can feel comfortable in our own bodies and our own selves, then we will say no to yes. the bad boy who does not Completely. deserve, who does not deserve entry into our body. And we will say no to, right. Like, to the things, maybe it's peer pressure to that, because no, yep. I love this body and she is my temple and I am going to honor her. So the Absolutely. sooner we get a young woman and a young man really loving yeah. themselves, that's what I love what you're saying about the yes and the no. Completely. Also, you know, a lot of times teenagers will go have sex with a bad boy because they, those feelings are awakening in their body and they don't know what mm. to do with them. But yeah. if they learn how to masturbate, like they can run their own sexual energy all by themselves. They all by themselves. Any, mm-hmm. oh. I love this so much. I could talk to you forever. Okay. Me Lauren. Too. Yes. yes. <laughs> so one thing I love to do with all my guests is I call, um, I play what's called a purpose power play round. And I'm just going to okay. ask you a couple of very random questions. And whatever's the first thing that comes to your mind is. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. Fun. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> okay. So number one, I know you've mentioned a couple, but what is, what is one book everyone out there needs to read? Oh, man. Oh God, I love so many books. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I would say the Illustrated Guide to Extend a Massive Orgasm is a great book. Um, the science yes, if it can of... lead to a four-minute orgasm, thank you. E- e- please, yes. please, yes. yes, please, yes. yes. The Science of Sex by Barry Kamasurik is also awesome if you're a science geek. Mm, I love that. Yeah, and then. <sighs> Okay, this is one that comes to mind. Creating Money by Oren and Da Ben is ah. a great abundance magic book that I love. Cool, cool. I love that abundance magic. We didn't even get into how being in your sensual and sexual self really can create more abundance. I had this experience, you know, I was at your workshop in, yeah. at Burning Man and um, went to a number of workshops and I was feeling such a goddess and learned how to take that life force energy and, and, think of my desires, think of what I want in doing so. And I left in that space. One of the things I said is I desire to work with 10 new coaching clients by the end of the year. And I tell you the week I got home from Burning Man, four women called and life force energy, because if it can create a baby, it can create anything we want in our life. It's so true. Oh my gosh. Sex magic is so powerful. Yeah. We haven't even talked about that, but it's true. Another, (laughs) another (laughs) Another episode. Another, yes. another time. So, okay. Uh, second question. Yes. What did you want to be when you were a little girl? Cause it probably wasn't this. Or maybe <laughs> it was this. I don't know. I wanted to be many things, but what comes to mind first is an anthropologist. Oh, interesting. Uh huh. Yeah. And in some ways you are. I know. Isn't that true? 
I studied mm-hmm. psychology and really honestly, like my whole life's work is really about human connection and people and why they do the things they do. And mm-hmm. <laughs> human sexuality is just one part of it. It is one part of it. It's so, so incredible. Uh-huh. Okay. And then um, give us just five years from now, one thing that you desire that we can all put our life energy, our life force energy into for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, definitely motherhood is on my, yes, yes motherhood is, uh, is, is happening. <laughs> I know so it is it. one thing I have yet to experience that I desire. Um, and in five years, I just, I would also, I think I have two books in me. One mm. I'm going to write with my partner and then another one on the topic of sensual alchemy, which is, is all about combining pleasure and pain to help transform our lives. Mm. Um, so I guess books and baby. <laughs> books and babies. I books love it. Babies. I love yeah. it. I have, I have had many, many, many of my own, um, desire sessions where I say books and babies, books and babies. So girlfriend, the books and the babies oh. come into you. I love it. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Right, everyone, you must find Lauren. Obviously you can tell how knowledgeable she is and how she takes all of this into a way that we can actually understand it and we can embody it. All right, Lauren, how do people find you? People can find me at tantrany.com. All of our class listings are found there. And then if you'd like to work with me privately for Tantra Healing Sessions or coaching, you can visit radiantecstasy.com. Radiantecstasy.com. And does someone have to be local to you or they can be everywhere? Nope. We can work on Zoom. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So make sure that you check Lauren out and all of the incredible offerings that she has. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Lauren. You have just really lit up my whole body and taught all of us so much in truly connecting with ourselves. So thank you for that. Thank you for having me on. It's my true pleasure. (laughs) Mm, 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 Mine too. And all of you out there, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to this episode of the Purpose Girl Podcast. If you loved it, and we hope that you do, go on over to Apple Podcasts and leave your five-star review Your five-star reviews are how women all over the world are finding us. That is how we've ended up in number three in mental health in Macau, number seven in mental health in Mexico. Your reviews are what are helping women all over the world find the podcast, become empowered, know their purpose, become and live their happiest lives. So thank you for those five-star reviews and keep them coming. Of course, if you haven't yet downloaded the 50 happiness tips or the living on purpose guide, head on over to purposegirl.com and you can get that there and then be on my weekly newsletter to find out about events and all that we have going on. And of course on Instagram, it's at Karen Rockind and on Facebook. If you haven't yet joined our free Facebook group, you want to do that because we post every day so that you can every week tell us your dreams and your goals every week, tell us your celebrations and all you've accomplished and so much more in between. Of course, the most important thing that you can do is to share the Purpose Girl podcast with every woman that you know. We all know women who could use this information. We all know women, whether it's your mothers, it's your best friends, make a book club out of it because we know that every woman deserves to be in her goddess sensual energy, just like Lauren taught us today. So pass this on. That is how we are changing the world one woman at a time. As always, may you live purposefully. May you love yourself. And may you love life. Bye for now.